PowerPoint may not be the best tool for data visualization, but it's a very powerful tool for storytelling. And if you know how to use animations and transitions effectively, it can be an enormously powerful tool for giving highly engaging data-driven presentations. I've already posted another video on my channel about how to animate bar charts and line charts in PowerPoint. And I've also written a couple blog posts on animating charts in PowerPoint. And there are links to those articles in the description. In this video, I wanted to share a technique for animating a slightly more complex type of chart, which is a scatter plot. Scatter plots are an incredibly versatile type of chart that can be applied to a wide range of different use cases. But I think they're most valuable when they're used to explore Explore the relationship between two continuous variables. One of my favorite uses of scatter plots can be seen in the late Hans Rosling's Gapminder presentations. If you're not familiar with this, Gapminder, which is a statistical visualization tool, was created by Rosling and it uses scatter plots to show the relationship between different demographic, economic, and social data, such as lifespan and income. Rosling was, in my opinion, one of the greatest visual storytellers to have ever lived because he had a unique ability to break down complex topics and present them in a highly engaging and visual way. But what made Rosling's Gapminder presentations really special was the use of animation. The challenge is that scatter plots are generally fixed in time, which means that they can really only show you or visualize data at one particular point in time. But with Gapminder, Rosling achieved time-based insight by essentially stitching together multiple iterations or years of data and animating them. The end result is a highly engaging chart animation that shows how the data changes over time. So in this video, I wanna demonstrate how you can achieve the same animation style with scatter plots, but within PowerPoint. Before we get into it, I wanna caveat that there are much easier ways to animate scatter plots in other software. You can use BI software or different visualization libraries like Power BI, Flourish, or D3 to accomplish the same effect in what would be a much more automated fashion and you could probably achieve it a lot faster. Flourish, for example, which is a great visualization tool, even includes a chart animation called animated scatter plot that would allow you to create a Gapminder style presentation within minutes. But sometimes we need to give data-driven presentations in widely accessible presentation tools like PowerPoint. And in these circumstances, pulling up a dashboard in Power BI in a live setting like a boardroom or a lecture hall may not be that practical. So if you're planning to give a live presentation with charts and you're looking to animate a scatter plot, then this guide is for you. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so to get started here, we're gonna be visualizing data from the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. So this is a data set that essentially contains global country stats for things like population, death rates, birth rates, et cetera. And in particular, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a scatter plot that plots a number of countries on the scatter plot canvas. And I'm gonna put life expectancy on one of the axes and birth rate on another axis. And we're gonna animate this over time to see how these things change over time. So this is where the data set's from. You can go and download the raw data set yourself. Uh, there's also a link in the description for this video to a blog post on my website where you can follow a step-by-step -step guide for this particular tutorial. And there's also downloadable files, including the raw data tables, as well as the PowerPoint template. So if you just wanna bypass this entire video and, and tutorial and just download the template, you can go straight to the blog post. Now, this is what that WPP data set looks like. It's a really big data file. It's about 20 plus megabytes. And what it does is it contains global stats for every single country over time. So you'll see essentially one record here for each country and some regions by year, and then you'll see a bunch of different stats. So you'll see things like they have population as of January 1st in 1950, population as of July 1st. So they've got a couple ways that the data is cut. All I really want from this data file is essentially the population because I'm gonna use that as the bubble size in my scatter plot. And I'm also going to be plotting life expectancy and birth rate. So birth rate is shown as CBR, that's crude birth rate, and life expectancy is shown as LEX. So these are essentially the only variables I'm going to be plotting. Now, I also don't wanna show all 190 plus countries because it's gonna make for a really crowded scatter plot. And the other thing is I'm not going to be animating every single year because you'll essentially have to create one chart for each year. And like I said in my intro, there are easier ways to animate scatter plots. I referenced the example of Flourish that could easily animate 100 years of data very quickly. 
But because we're talking about giving live presentations in PowerPoint, it's going to be a little bit more manual. And so I highly recommend that you do fewer time intervals because it's going to take a long time to create 100 charts if you want to do 100 years of data. So in my example, I'm just going to choose 12 countries across three time intervals, which is going to be 1950, 1985, and 2020. And I've gone ahead and curated that data. So here you can see these are my 12 countries, and I've got one table for each of the years. So this first table here is 1950, there's the population data, there's the crude birth rate, and there's the life expectancy. And again, there's one little table here for each of those three years. I've also gone ahead and created the charts, which you can see on the right side here. There's some labels on here. I'm actually gonna remove these. I don't want these for my final charts. And we're gonna be copying these over to PowerPoint. You could technically create these charts within PowerPoint, but I highly recommend that you create it in Excel first so that it's saved in a separate file. You start by creating your first chart here. And instead of going here and creating a brand new chart and going insert scatter plot, just replicate this chart in Excel. And what you can do is change, say, the year here, 1985. And you can just click on the data or the bubbles in the chart, and it'll highlight the data here. And what I can do is I can just pull these down, pull this down here and just change what it's referencing, it will update the data and it'll keep your chart formatting. The reason that this is good to do is because if you formatted this chart, it will carry forward that formatting. There's one really important thing you need to do, which is to make sure that the min and max values for each of the X and Y axes is identical across the three charts because if I create each of these charts manually, Excel will apply a min and max range for the axes that makes sense for that data. And you can see this data changes quite a bit across these three charts. And if the min and max values change, it will really mess up the way you animate the charts. So you need to make sure that they are consistent. The way to do that is you can either just click on the axes and right click and then format axes, or click on the format ribbon here, and then over on the left side, you can click on this drop down and select horizontal value axes. We're gonna edit that first. And then you can also change the vertical value axes afterwards. I've already established that a good min and max here is zero to 60 on my Y axes and zero to 90 on my X axes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click horizontal value axes. If your format pane is not already open, just click on format pane here in the corner and you wanna to go to bounds. And so I'm currently editing the X axis and I want this to be capped at 90, so a zero to 90. Now I'm gonna go and edit the vertical axes here and I want this to be capped at 60. So I've created my second chart here and again, I can copy and paste this again to create the third chart. Copy and pasting the chart will carry forward the custom formatting if you have any, but you do have to remember to set those min and max ranges it's very important before you paste these over to PowerPoint. So now that these charts are ready, let's go over to PowerPoint so we can start creating the animations. So the first thing you're gonna do is paste your charts into PowerPoint. And from here, what you can do is you can resize the charts, you can apply some additional formatting if needed. Make sure that you copy over all the charts. So if you're doing three years, copy the three charts. If you do 10 years, you have to copy all 10 charts. But just for safety, I'm gonna keep a version of this unedited. So I'm gonna duplicate this slide. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this slide into a Microsoft drawing object, and that will allow us to create the animation. I'm going to copy this again, or I'm gonna cut it, so Control X. And instead of just hitting Control V, this time I'm going to go Edit, Paste Special, and you wanna choose Picture SVG. It has to be this exact one. Click OK. This has just done something very important for us, which is it's converted all of the shapes in this chart into objects. Well, what we need to do now is ungroup these objects. So I'm gonna right click on this and go group, ungroup. And first of all, it's gonna ask me if I wanna convert this to a Microsoft drawing object. I'm gonna click yes. You have to repeat that step once again, because all it has done is converted it to a drawing object. It has not ungrouped it yet. Let's right click on this again, go group, ungroup. And you'll know that this has worked if you see it highlighting all the different elements within the graphic now. You'll notice that these are now individual objects. So if I just quickly paste in the next chart, which is 1985, and I follow the same steps, so group, ungroup, convert it to an object, and then ungroup it once again, you'll actually be able to go ahead and just apply the morph transition and see this animation in action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this second slide here, go to transitions 
and add morph. And there you can see it already working. So if I go back to slide two and I trigger the animation, you'll see that it's working there. It's going from 1950 to 1985 and it's applying that animation. The morph transition is really cool because it'll essentially fill in the gaps and allows you to create some kind of cool animations within PowerPoint. But this only works when the same objects exist across the slides. And this will not work if all of these objects are still grouped. So if you forget to ungroup these charts and you try to use the morph transition, it's not going to work. So essentially all you're doing is you're pasting the charts into PowerPoint from Excel. You're then repasting them in as SVG pictures and then ungrouping them to convert them to a drawing object. And then you're simply using a morph transition to create the animations between the slides. I've gone ahead and I've converted all of the three years, 1950, 1985, and 2020, and converted all of these to drawing objects. You can see I've also added in some additional formatting here. So I've added in a nice legend to be able to make the color codes on the chart easier to understand. And I've even added in some additional animations. So let's see what this looks like. So starting with 1950, you can see then this is 1985, and then it goes to 2020. So that's three years. And then what I've also done, I've added some additional animations here. So let's say I wanted to zoom in to just one country, in this case, Thailand. And then I added a little call out here. So this is, again, this is just storytelling. If you wanted to uh, zoom in on specific countries in your presentation. The way these additional builds were done is after the main animation is done, you can see that there is essentially just another slide here where all the other objects here were grayed out. I've also grayed them out on the legends, so you can kind of see that. And all you're doing here is a fade transition, so it fades between these two slides instead of morphing it. And this last slide is where we add the callout. There's a fade animation for this gray dot to appear. And I've also applied a wipe animation for this a little callout box to appear on the slide. You can see that I've done a lot more formatting to make this chart look nice. A couple things that are really important for this to work is that the canvas cannot change. You can see that as I'm changing these slides, the background chart elements, the axes, the grid lines do not move. So when you copy and paste the charts over into PowerPoint, you want to make sure that they're all the same size when you convert them to drawing objects and that they're placed in the exact same placement on the canvas itself. One thing that I did here was I created the underlying chart objects. I formatted it to my liking, and then I just pasted this across the slide. So I didn't have to reformat this every time I added a new chart. So essentially all I was taking from those Excel charts that I converted to drawing objects was essentially these objects. And you might say, well, why did I need to do that? I could create these manually. The good thing about doing it this way by creating them in Excel first and converting them into Microsoft drawing objects is that they will have pixel level accuracy to the size and placement that they need to be. In this case, we're dealing with a very complex chart. You want to make sure that the placement of these bubbles and the size of them is statistically perfect in terms of what they represent on the chart. And if you tried to create this manually by eyeballing it, you're going to make mistakes or you might create a deceptive chart. So with this method, you're essentially taking real charts that are statistically accurate in terms of the size of the chart elements and then converting them into objects and then animating them. I've included a link to a blog post on my website where I walk through this step by step. And I've also included a downloadable file for the Excel tables that I created that also include the original scatter plots in Excel. And I've also included a downloadable file for this exact PowerPoint with this full animation. So if you want to see exactly how this was built and recreate it yourself, you can do that. So I hope this video was helpful. Good luck with your next live data-driven presentation. And thanks again for watching.